Number 10, Dracula's Castle in Bran, Romania. Bran Castle is a castle in Bran, Romania that is a national monument and landmark in Transylvania. It's commonly known outside of Transylvania as Dracula's Castle because it's the only castle in all of Transylvania that actually fits Bram Stoker's description of Dracula's Castle even though he never visited Romania. Most historians agree that Vlad III Dracula never set foot in Castle Bran, which was neither a friendly place for him to visit nor under his rule. Nonetheless, this castle is still creepy. The castle has 57 rooms and of course, a secret passage. While being beautiful during the day, the castle takes on a whole other look at night. In the villages near Bran, there is a belief in the existence of evil spirits called ghosts or strigoi. Until half a century ago, it was believed that there existed certain living people who were leading a normal life during the day, but during their sleep at midnight, their souls left their bodies and haunted the village, tormenting people in their sleep. So yeah. I'd stay away from this castle at midnight. Number nine, Savitri Bai Puel Hostel in Chandigarh, India. This is a hostel where spirits have been seen by students. Apparitions with and without heads are noticeable from the windows of some of the hostel rooms accompanied with loud thumps. The hostel security official Bal Karan said, I suddenly heard a lot of shouting from the fifth floor. It must have been around 3 a.m. then. When I reached the girls, they claimed they saw a mysterious person floating around. I checked the entire premises with two colleagues but couldn't find anything. Experiencing goosebumps at the slightest mention of a floating apparition, girls in the hostel kept their lights on while sleeping and let music play in the background. A student said, this is not someone's imagination, more than 10 of us have seen the ghost. Don't dismiss this as mere superstition. Number 8. Lizzie Borden House in Fall River, Massachusetts. The Lizzie Borden House is notorious for being the home of Lizzie Borden and her family, and it is the location of the 1892 unsolved double murder of Lizzie's father and stepmother, Andrew and Abby Borden. At about 11.15 a.m., Lizzie discovered her father dead, repeatedly struck in the head with a sharp instrument. Upstairs, his wife's body was found, even more brutally mutilated. No weapon was found, though an axe found in the basement was suspected. Lizzie was arrested and tried for both murders in June 1893 but was acquitted, giving the circumstantial evidence. You can now take tours of the house or even stay the night. While some guests do not witness anything, many regularly claim to experience strange things throughout the house. This includes strange odors, voices, objects moving on their own, feeling touched at night, and footsteps. This house is considered one of the most haunted houses in the United States. Number 7. Island of the Dolls near Mexico City, Mexico. Island of the Dolls is a small island just south of Mexico City where hundreds of dolls hang from the trees. Legend has it that a young girl mysteriously drowned in the river. Her doll was found and hung from the tree in tribute. But not long after, it was believed the doll was possessed by the girl. So the man who originally found her, Julian, kept bringing more and more dolls in an attempt to please her spirit. After 50 years of collecting dolls and hanging them on the island, Julian was found dead, drowned in the same spot where the girl did. Many people on the island believe that Julian has joined the other spirits on the island. After his death in 2001, it had become a tourist attraction where visitors bring more dolls, some mutated and hanging from trees. The island has become very famous and has even been featured in many articles and TV shows including Ghost Adventures and Lore and was also featured on BuzzFeed Unsolved. Local legend says that the dolls move their head and arms and even open their eyes. Plain old dolls can be creepy, but a whole bunch of them on an island? I'm out. Number six. The Stanley Hotel in Estes Park, Colorado. The Stanley Hotel is an 140 room hotel about five miles from the entrance to Rocky Mountain National Park. It was built by Freeland Oscar Stanley and opened on July 4th, 1909. The Stanley Hotel inspired the Overlook Hotel in Stephen King's 1977 best selling novel, The Shining. In the years following the publication of The Shining, the Stanley Hotel gained a reputation as a setting for paranormal activity. It has hosted numerous paranormal investigators and appeared in shows 
shows such as Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. Stanley died in 1940, but many believe his presence can still be seen and felt at the hotel, mainly at the bar and in the billiard room. The ghost of his wife, Flora, has a habit for tinkering around the hotel's piano, according to multiple accounts. The fourth floor is the most haunted, with guests hearing children's laughter in the hall with no one to be found. Down the hall in room 407, multiple guests have reported being tucked into bed by some invisible force, and others have felt someone sit on the foot of the bed only to find nothing there. In room 428, some have seen the vision of a cowboy looming over their bed as they slept or standing in the corner. There's also been a photo captured of a spirit on the main staircase of the hotel. This hotel inspired a horror movie, so it's a big nope from me. Number 5. The Paris Catacombs in France In the 18th century, amidst a public health crisis relating to the city's cemeteries, authorities decided to relocate the cemetery's remains to an abandoned quarry. This effort created the meticulous arranged Paris Catacombs lined with bones that holds the remains of more than 6 million people. As one visits the catacombs, a sign above reads, Arrête, c'est ici l'Empire de la Mort, which means stop, this is the empire of death. The catacombs of Paris became a curiosity for more privileged French, and an early visitor was the Count of Aristos during 1787. Public visits began after its renovation and the 1814 to 1815 war. First visits were allowed only a few times a year with permission of an authorized mines inspector, but later more frequently and permitted by any mine overseer. Over the years, it was open monthly, weekly, and eventually daily. The idea of this was smart, but going to visit it and seeing all those bones from dead people, that makes me uneasy. Number four. Hoya Bashu Forest in Cluj, Napica, Romania. This forest is located in Romania and it just looks creepy. It's filled with crooked trees, contorted into strange shapes, almost as if they're attempting to warn visitors. It's known as the Bermuda Triangle of Transylvania and there have been many reports of UFO sightings, ghost encounters, and unexplainable illness. There are many legends and stories about this forest, perhaps the creepiest being about a young girl who disappeared only to emerge five years later with no recollection of what happened. Like, what? The Hoya Bushu Forest has been featured in paranormal documentary TV shows from Ghost Adventures to Destination Truth and a Swedish series. Let it be known that you will never find me taking a stroll in this forest. Number 3. Bellwitch Caves in Adams, Tennessee The Bellwitch Cave is near where the Bell Farm once stood and is approximately 490 feet long. This cave has been associated with the Bell family where they were haunted by an entity now known as the Bell Witch. According to the legend, from 1817 to 1821, the family and the local area came under attack by a mostly invisible entity that was able to speak, affect physical environment, and shapeshift. Some accounts record the spirit also to have been clairvoyant and capable of crossing long distances with superhuman speed and or of being in more than one place at a time. The Bell Witch Cave has been associated with the spirit of Kate Batts, who allegedly haunted the Bell family as she was believed to be cheated by them in a land purchase. In the particular legend in which the cave is featured, young Betsy Bell and some of her friends had gone to explore the cave. While they were there, one of the boys crawled into a hole and became stuck. A voice cried out, I'll get him out. The boy felt hands grasping his feet and he was pulled out of the hole. The supposed entity, still invisible, then gave the young explorers a lecture on reckless cave exploring. Many believe that when the witch departed the family, she fled to the sanctuary of this cave. Number 2. The Conjuring House in Harrisville, Rhode Island Originally called the Arnold Estate, this house came filled with horrors. In January 1971, the Perrin family, Roger, Carolyn, and their five daughters, Andrea, Nancy, Christine, Cindy, and April, moved into a farmhouse. Not long after moving in, the family reportedly experienced all manners of paranormal activities, from apparitions to physical attacks by unseen hands. The most frequent apparition was that of a woman with a broken neck who came to be popularized as Bathsheba Sherman. Paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren inserted themselves into the family's alleged experiences, making the case famous via their lectures and eventually the Conjuring film. 
The Perrin family claimed that the paranormal experiences went on for almost 10 years until the family had to abandon the house in 1980. Today you can do tours of the house where guests report being touched and hearing voices, including one that will often warn guests to get out of the basement if there is a malvoyant spirit around. And number 1. Queen Mary in Long Beach, California Queen Mary is a retired British ocean liner that sailed from 1936 to 1967. She sailed to the port of Long Beach, California where she was permanently docked. The city of Long Beach bought the ship to serve as a tourist attraction featuring restaurants, a museum and a hotel, but claims were made that the ship was haunted. There are resident spirits including Jackie, the little girl who haunts the first class pool, John Petter who was crushed by a watertight door, senior second officer William Eric Stark who accidentally drove drank cleaning fluid instead of gin, and the cook, who was baked alive by his own kitchen staff during World War II. But arguably, the most notorious location on the ship for paranormal activity is stateroom B340. Reports claim that someone was knocking on a door in the middle of the night, bathroom lights turning on by themselves, the sink faucet turning on and off on its own, and unexplained bathroom doors shutting. Some guests have reported the covers of their bed being pulled off while asleep and waking to see a dark dark figure standing at the foot of the bed. Even the hotel's maid started complaining about the experience and were scared. The room was closed for guests for many years due to all this and all I can say is no way. Number 10 Black Forest in Germany The Black Forest in Germany is one of the most mysterious places on earth and is said to have inspired many tales by the brothers Grimm and if you know the originals then you know it gets pretty dark. It gets its name from a 100 mile stretch of pine trees that are so dense the sun struggles to reach the forest floor. If you choose to visit, it is recommended that you make sure to spend at least a good few days exploring it. You definitely won't be bored. There are natural hot springs on the northwestern border, which Romans used to take advantage of after long battles. Mark Twain once said that time is easily lost within these woods, saying that, and I quote, Here you lose track of time in 10 minutes and the world in 20. So if you want to do as the Romans did, be sure to make this an addition to your travel plans. You know, you know, you know, after all this is over. Number 9, Quang Si Falls. Don't go chasing waterfalls unless, of course, it's these ones because man, are they breathtaking. Guangxi Falls are probably the most beautiful system of waterfalls in the world. Move over, Niagara. We get it, you're really big. The inviting turquoise water pours over limestone platforms and rocks framed by lush greenery from the surrounding forest. The falls are the stuff dreams are made of and you may never want to leave. There is also a bear sanctuary nearby that you can visit. Locals recommend visitors try and go as early as possible before the falls get a little crowded. Crowded. Number eight, the Sea of Stars. This one is actually on my bucket list. I've always wanted to see it and I've always wanted to go, and it's actually inspired uh, something I'm writing in a book. So, cute little fun fact. We all know the Maldives to be a stunning retreat for any couple seeking a romantic honeymoon. The Sea of Stars is one such reason people go, and I can imagine before anyone knew the science behind it, it must have been seen as a kind of beautiful magic. Let's be honest, science is magic in so many ways. So, yeah. Imagine having just had dinner and going for a long walk on the beach only to have beautiful blue stars tickle your toes. Well, not stars exactly, but a specific kind of bioluminescent plankton. Stress caused by the movement of the sea and waves leads the plankton to emit light like fireflies. It's one of the rarest events on earth and can't really be predicted, but Vato Island in Ra'atoll is the most well-known island where you can see this, so keep an eye out. Number 7, the Chapel de Saint-Michel de Aiguille. Not to be confused with Mont Saint-Michel, this is one of the most spectacular chapels ever built. Perhaps not for its ordinance, but mostly because of where they decided to put it. It looks like the architect was in some kind of contest that involved building chapels in impossible places. The rock formation it sits on looks like a needle, hence the name which translates to St. Michael on a Needle. Though of course there are taller places in the world, this is one of the most mysterious and sacred. It used to be a volcano and rises 279 feet with 268 steps leading to the chapel. Beautiful fresco murals and stained glass await you inside the chapel and is often used as a place of meditation and prayer. The thing that most strikes me about this place is imagining how they would have even constructed it. Like, uh, There's not much room up there for like, I don't know, an ancient scaffold or something, but apparently the views were worth it so they figured it out. Kind of like the pyramids. Number 6, the Song Dung Cave, Vietnam. Song Dung is the largest cave in the world and was discovered in 1991 by a man named Ho Khan. The cave was created anywhere between two 
two to five million years ago by the river that runs through it. The ceiling eventually collapsed, which left fantastic skylights. It is more than 200 meters wide, 150 meters high, nine kilometers long. You could potentially fit an entire city inside. There's even mini forests. Several treks into the cave have given us tremendous insights into the overall mapping of the cave, and the images are spectacular. Like it looks like a cave you would find in the middle of the earth, you know. That Jules Verne store. Anyways, if you are a passionate splunker, then I highly recommend checking this place out if you can. But bring friends, you know. Number five, Mount Roraima. This mountain seriously looks like the perfect battleground for an epic duel face off between gods. At least that's like what I pictured. Mount Roraima sits on the border of Venezuela, Guinea, and Brazil. The mountain's semi flat surface is a result of heavy rainfall all year round. The rain also causes random, spectacular waterfalls. Of course, the mountain was known by by locals, but Walter Raleigh made his discovery of it in 1596 while he was trying to find the legendary city of El Dorado, but he was unable to climb it. The easiest, easiest way of the mountain is by climbing a natural staircase forest trail on the Venezuelan side. But once you get up there, get ready to give your breath away if it wasn't already taken by the trek. The views from the top are absolutely stunning and you feel as if you are floating on a mountain in the sky. Number four, Lake Hillier, Australia. Pink! It's pink! It's literally a pink lake. Nature got bored of the color blue and was like, make it pink. And so they did. Separated from the southern ocean by just a thin strip of sand, Lake Hillier sits in stark contrast to a bright blue ocean surrounding it. It was discovered in 1802 by Matthew Flinders when he led an expedition to the islands. Despite scientific testing, there is no distinct reason as to why the lake is so pink. Even if you pour it in a glass, it will still look pink. It's not just a trick of the light. Studies suggest that due to the saline quality in the presence of a special kind of microalgae. The algae produces carotenoids, which is a pigment found in carrots, so that could be one reason as to why it's a pink. It's a pink color. It measures 600 meters wide and is a remarkable image to fly above, especially in contrast to the blue ocean and the greenery around. Oh, gorgeous. Apparently it's safe to swim in, but it's incredibly hard to reach, but not impossible. So if you do decide to visit, get ready for a trek. Honestly, all these places, get your mountain boots on. Number three, Salar de Uni. This is actually on my bucket list. It's been on my bucket list since I think I was around 10. Salar is the world's largest salt flat and can even be seen from space. Layers of salt lie between sedimentary rock and it is estimated that around 10 billion tons of salt is there, but more importantly, lithium. You know, the material that powers smartphones, laptops, and tons more? Yeah. 70% of the world's lithium stores lie within Salar and an entire industry has been devoted to the extraction. But other than the science, why is this place so magical? Well, on a still calm day, a thin layer of water Water transforms the entire flat into the world's largest mirror. Ever wanted to feel like you're floating in the sky without jumping out of a plane? Well, this is the place to be. If you ever tire of such a sight, you can also check out the thermal waters to end your day. Number two, the Waitomo Glowworm Cave, New Zealand. Honestly, New Zealand should just be on this list. It's like, you know it exists, but so many otherworldly places exist in New Zealand. No wonder Lord of the Rings and Narnia filmed there. It truly looks like no other place on earth. But the Waitomo Glowworm Cave is something you have to visit at least once in your life. Another one on my list. We talked about the sea of stars. This is the cave of wonders. Filled with bioluminescent glowworms called Arachnocampa luminosa, along with albino ants and giant crickets, it honestly looks like a cave that belongs in James Cameron's avatar. There are a variety of ways you can explore the caves, either by raft or boat rides. It's definitely on my list. Number one, Huacachina, Peru. Upon approaching this place, you may think it's a mirage created by the heat of the desert that surrounds it, but I assure you, it's real. Huacachina, Peru is literally an oasis in the middle of the desert equipped with nightclubs, restaurants, hotels to boot. It's about 5 hours away from Lima or 15 minutes away from Ica. Besides being famous as the only oasis in a desert, people come here from all over to sandboard. The oasis formed thanks to an underground current that allowed vegetation like palm trees, carob trees, and eucalyptus to grow. But local lore says that the water formed from the tears of a maiden in Takara who lost her true love, an Inca warrior. Then one night, another warrior passed and fearing being observed, she threw herself into the lake that she had made. She waited there for hours until he passed and when he finally did, she couldn't leave the lake and had instead transformed into a mermaid. Legend says that every full moon, the woman emerges to cry over her true love once again, filling 
the lake. In our number 10 spot, we have the Leaning Tower of Pisa. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is a tale of an extraordinary phenomena where a piece of architecture was built on a slant, accidentally, and it never fell down. The Leaning Tower of Pisa took 200 centuries to complete, starting in the year 1173. Having multiple generations pass on the lowdown of building the structure makes you think that broken telephone may have been the cause for it turning out the way that it did. In any case, over the centuries, it continued to slant more and more until 1990 when it was decided that something needed to be done as it was becoming unsafe, leaning 5.5 degrees from the perpendicular. It was blocked off to visitors until it was repaired and the leaning was decreased. In our number nine spot, we have the Paris Catacombs. Established in 1810, the Paris Catacombs became a home to more than six million skeletal French heads. I'm not joking. It's quite extraordinary and creepy at the same time. It's an underground ossuary located, of course, in Paris, France, that was built to consolidate Paris's ancient stone quarries. It was made essentially as part of an effort to eliminate the city's overflowing cemeteries. It was largely forgotten about until musicians started holding concerts there, and now it's become quite the tourist attraction. So, so interesting. I definitely want to visit it at some point in my life. In our number eight spot, we have the Island of Snakes. Yeah, I would have thought that this place only existed in my nightmares, but unfortunately, it's real. There's an island called Iladakimada Grenji, and this island is infested with poisonous snakes. Yep, it's an island in Brazil that's blocked off to civilians because of how dangerous it is. Only researchers with doctors present are allowed on the island to study the snakes, as some of them are just too dangerous to have anyone go there without a doctor. <laughs> Why couldn't an island of puppies exist? I know Japan has a cat island, and boy, do I want to go there. Dear creator, why snakes? Just why. Love your bestie for the resty, Mel. <laughs> In our number seven spot, we have the Darveza Gas Crater. Also known as the Gateway to Hell, the Darveza Gas Crater is a giant fiery crater that has been burning for more than 40 years. It's located in the Turkmenistan Desert, and apparently they say that it's the size of a football field. Okay, so let me get this straight. There is a fiery crater that looks like the Gates of Hell, hence the nickname, that has been burning for 40 years, and we're not trying to make it stop? Why? <laughs> I shall never understand this world. But I guess perhaps we don't think that it's not completely unsafe because we don't seem to be trying to stop it. Apparently it was created after a group of Soviet engineers thought that they had stumbled across an undiscovered oil field and began drilling. The ground collapsed and suddenly a fiery crater emerged. It's become a bit of a tourist attraction over the years. And even a Canadian scientist by the name of George Karunas went into the crater to retrieve dirt to examine. Risked being burned to death all in the name of science. In our number six spot, we have Thor's Well. In Cape Perpetua in Oregon, there is a place called Thor's Well, which is a gaping, seemingly bottomless sinkhole. Well, it's not actually bottomless, but it certainly seems that way as it swallows the seawater around it. This place is also known as being the drain pipe of the Pacific. It is a very dangerous natural wonder that scientists believe started out as a sea cave dug out by the waves before the roof eventually collapsed, and this then created an opening at the top and bottom. Scientists theorize that the well is likely only 20 feet deep. It's apparently a very magical sight to see on days that it is high tide, as the waves hit the rocks in a very little mermaid singing kind of way. If you don't get that reference, then sorry. The waves hit the rocks violently and funnels into the hole. That would be pretty spectacular to see, even though water scares me and I would would probably want to be far away from it. <laughs> Unless someone held my hand, then I would be fine. Hashtag wimpy kid. <laughs> In our number five spot, we have the Fly Geyser in Nevada. This is a geyser that is located on a private island in Gerlach, Nevada, that apparently is very spectacular to see. It is one of Nevada's coolest attractions to see, in fact. If you don't know what a geyser is, it's a spring that has an intermittent discharge of water ejected turbulently, and with it is steam, as geyser field sites are usually located near an active volcano. The geyser apparently contains 
contains thermophilic algae, which thrives in moist, hot environments. And as a result, the rocks become colorful with hues of red and green. In 2016, the Burning Man Project, a nonprofit organization, purchased the land that it's on, known as the Fly Ranch, for $6.5 million, and now the public has limited access to it. It must be a special place for them to have done that. In our number four spot, we have Lake Natron. The Salt Lake Natron, located in Tasmania, is probably one of my fave things to have existed on this planet. It's a pink lake, y'all. That's pretty cool. I don't know. If I lived close to there, I would be taking pics like all the time. <laughs> Pink's my fave color, so that's why. How is this lake pink, you ask? Well, it's both a salt and soda lake. Not cream soda, although damn, that sounds delicious. On second thought, <laughs> the thought of it mixed with salt makes me want to hurl, so never mind. The soda part just means that the lake is heavy on the alkaline side of neutrality. The lake is in the Eresha region of Tasmania, and it's quite massive at 57 kilometers long and 22 kilometers wide. It's quite shallow though at 3 meters deep. Because of its high alkaline pH, this is not a lake that you want to swim in unless you want to get sick. Ah well, at least it's pretty to look at. In our number 3 spot, we have Pamukkale Thermal Baths. Pamukkale is a town in Turkey that has thermal baths that are truly the most beautiful. Sparkling, teal in color, these pools of water make you remember that the world is a beautiful, magical place. These baths formed as a result of an earthquake and they are beside some historical cities. Notably, Hierapolis, an ancient Roman spa founded in 190 BC, is right beside these pools, so of course some believe they hold the wisdom and magic from the ancient times. They have also been nicknamed Cleopatra's Pool as it is said that she swam there once. Damn, I definitely have to put this on my bucket list. In our number two spot, we have the River of Five Colors. In the province of Meta in Colombia, there is a river that is basically a rainbow river, known for its many names. The Cano Cristals, the River of Five Colors, Liquid Rainbow. This river is truly unlike anything you have ever seen. I know what you might be thinking, how is this possible? How can a river be colorful? Well, this is possible because of a few aquatic plants called fauna and and flora that are always there, and they give the water the intense colors. The canyon and river is easy to visit. You just go to Serrania de la Macarena National Park, and it's there. Pretty wild. I'm surprised that I have never seen one Insta selfie with this river before. In our number one spot, we have the Glowing Cave. There is a cave in New Zealand that's been given the name of the Glow Worm Cave because, well, because it's full of millions of Arachnocampa luminosa which is a glowworm species that is only in New Zealand. The glowworms are all seemingly at the top of the cave, just lighting up the cave in a very beautiful way. Did you ever have glow-in-the-dark stars on your ceiling as a kid? Or even still now? Whatever, they're cool. <laughs> Anyways, I did, and this reminds me of that. Perhaps I wonder if this is where the creators got their inspiration from? <laughs> Blonde moment, that's the stars, Melissa. <laughs> Whatever, just love me. <laughs> This wondrous cave is a part of the Waitomo Caves and it is easily accessible via a boat ride. They recommend that you go with a tour guide though in order to preserve the cave and to not bother the glowworms. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Boiling River. It is pretty common knowledge that the Amazon is home to the longest river in the world, but there is another river found in the Amazon rainforest that is equally as astonishing, but for a very different reason. The Boiling River got its name for being exactly that, as it is a river that is near a boiling point at all times. The water temperature reaches up to 93 degrees Celsius, which is just shy of the boiling point, and the steam coming off the surface of the water is an obvious warning to all living creatures that it is absolutely unswimmable. You could, however, poach an egg in this river, although that's probably not the recommended cooking method. But if you wanted to swim in the river, you might become the poached egg. There is still debate around the source of the heat for this river, but as of right now, it is believed to be entirely natural and geothermal. Since the river is not near any active volcanoes or geothermal vents, however, it is quite an anomaly. There are of course more local legends that state that the river is a place of power and that the mother of waters is responsible for the creation of this incredible and strange river. Either way, just 
don't swim in it and everything will be fine. In our number 9 spot today we have Mount Roraima. This mountain is located on the border of Venezuela, Brazil and Guyana and it is the highest mountain in its chain. This mountain features an unusual tabletop summit and is extremely hard to explore due to its steep slopes and just generally rough terrain. Aside from the physical aspect however, it is extremely difficult to get permission to climb this mountain because of its triple border. There is an ancient belief that goes hand in hand with this mountain that says that this mountain was once the home to a tree that produced all of the fruits and vegetables in the world. This spiritual belief has of course only increased the difficulty in getting permission to summit the mountain. While it has been climbed before and a few lucky people have followed the exact same trail as the initial climb, much of the rest of the mountain has never been explored and therefore remains uncharted territory. It is said that this mountain has over 5,000 different plant species that grow only there and nowhere else and it is said that it looks roughly the same as it did millions and millions of years ago. This place truly is magical and it looks like a land that floats above the clouds. In our number 8 spot today we have Moval Cave. This cave is located in Romania just a few kilometers from the coast of the Black Sea and it was first discovered in 1986. This cave has been isolated from the outside world for millions of years and basically everything that goes on inside of it is different than what we are used to. The cave life is not based on photosynthesis and rather chemosynthesis. The level of oxygen in the cave is around a third of what is normally found in the atmosphere and of the 48 species found in the cave so far, 33 of them were endemic meaning that they can't be found anywhere else on earth. It is just crazy that it is possible for five and a half million years the creatures on this planet could be living an entirely different life than the rest of us inside a previously undiscovered place. It truly is fascinating. In our number 7 spot today we have lightning. Basically in western Venezuela right over the Catatumbo river there are these intense insane lightning storms and it's a complete atmospheric phenomenon. This lightning occurs 140 to 160 nights a year, 9 hours per day and from 16 to 40 times per minute. That is insane. That's so much lightning. Another thing that's so fascinating about this lightning is that it is colorful and doesn't produce any thunder. The lightning does change its frequency up from time to time and at one point it stopped for a few weeks and people thought that maybe it was going to have been exhausted forever but that changed when the lightning came back putting it right back on our list of mysteries that we just can't quite figure out. Many people have studied the lightning trying to figure out how exactly it has been created and what makes this phenomena what it is but we just aren't really quite sure yet. In our number 6 spot today we have Point Nemo. You know when you take a road trip and you have to stop somewhere to pee and it's always just like a random town and you're like wow we're really out here in the middle of nowhere right now. Well those random towns have nothing on Point Nemo. This is the most remote location on earth. It's actually known as the oceanic pole of inaccessibility because it is the furthest point away from land. This area is surrounded by more than 1000 miles of ocean in every direction. There's obviously no humans who live even close to Point Nemo which is why it is called that in the first place, Nemo being Latin for no one. While this may not be a scientifically impossible place, it's just this one fact that is honestly so shocking to me and it's what got this place a spot on this list. This location is so isolated that the closest people to Nemo aren't even on this earth. Since the inhabited area closest to the point is over 1000 miles away, the humans aboard the International Space Station are way closer than anyone is on land. Truly just wild. Kind of sounds like a dream, kind of sounds like a nightmare. I don't know. In our number 5 spot today we have Kawa Ijen. Located in Indonesia, this is one of the most remarkable and interesting places on earth. Firstly, this active volcano emits hot flammable sulfurous gases. These gases ignite as they enter the oxygen rich atmosphere of earth and this causes them to burn with a stunning blue flame. Further scientific processes also allows there to be a flow of molten sulfur that also has the same striking blue flame. At night is really when you get quite a show from this coloring as it quite literally looks like a flow of blue lava. The other incredible thing about this location is that there is a one kilometer wide caldera that is filled with turquoise blue water. The watercolor, while it looks gorgeous, is a result of the extreme acidity as well as a high concentration of dissolved metals. It truly is an astonishing place to look at and really is quite magnificent. In our number 4 spot today we have the double tree. This double tree is located in Italy and when you look at it, at first it simply just doesn't quite seem possible 
impossible. Referred to as the double tree of Kesorzo, this is a healthy cherry tree that is growing out of a mulberry tree. This isn't the first ever case of a parasitic tree, but what sets this one apart is its health and longevity. Previous examples of parasitic trees have been small, stunted trees that don't live for very long, but in this case, these trees are fully formed and healthy and no one is really quite sure how this all happened. The roots of the cherry tree were able to push through the mulberry tree's trunk where they could extend into the soil below, and thus the healthiest double tree ever was born. In our number three spot today, we have Cape Melville. Cape Melville is located in Australia and is the home to one of the lost worlds of the earth. It truthfully wasn't discovered until recently, and that is due to the surrounding wall of granite boulders that are hundreds of feet tall. But inside this stone wall is an amazing, mysterious, an uncharted rainforest, which is just the coolest thing. Because of the more recent discovery and the lack of exploration, this area has been preserved in its natural state, which is something not easily found on our very overpopulated planet. This place is only accessible by helicopter and has only seen one major scientific exploration, but on this one adventure, at least three new species were found. I'm sure there will be further research of the area to learn about all of the endemic species that live there and to study how they evolved to fit in this interesting ecosystem. The earth really is just so cool. In our number two spot today, we have the Devil's Kettle. This area is said to hold one of Minnesota's greatest mysteries. As the Brule River flows through in order to make its way toward Lake Superior, there is a point where it makes an 800 foot drop in eight miles. Because of this journey through time, waterfalls have been created as the water erodes the rocky terrain. One waterfall in particular is the one we want to talk about today. The stream splits into two as it falls over the edge. One of the two streams flows exactly how you would think it does, while the other is a little more mysterious. On this side, the water rushes into a cavern that seems to go nowhere. The cavern never fills up somehow, but no one can figure out where the water is going. It's a strange phenomenon that has resulted in the fall gaining the nickname, the Devil's Kettle. It is said that people have tried to place things in the water that might help show them where the water is flowing to, but despite these efforts, the items were just never seen again. In our number one spot today, we have Hesdalen Valley. This is an area that is located in rural central Norway, and while I'm sure it's a wonderful place, we are specifically talking today about what is called the Hesdalen Lights. These lights are of unknown origin. They appear in both the day and the night, and they sort of float through the valley. It is said that the time where the lights appeared the most frequently was between the end of 1981 to 1984, with 15 to 20 sightings per week, but that as of 2010, sightings of the lights is now only around 10 to 20 times annually. The lights are usually white, yellow, or red, and sometimes they appear for only a few seconds, while other times they'll stick around for over an hour. The weirdest thing to me is that these lights move. Sometimes they move insanely fast, other times they're slowly swaying back and forth, sometimes they're just hovering there. No one knows where these lights come from, and I'm just gonna say it. Aliens. There are some currently working hypotheses that one day we might be able to explain this phenomena, but for now, we are just left guessing. Number 10, Café du Monde. Café du Monde is probably one of the most well known places on this list, mostly for having what many people say are the best beignets in town, but there can be a problem with the service. Nope, not from the employees, I'm sure that they're amazing, but apparently, some people give their order to a waiter only to never have it arrive or see the waiter again. Since the restaurant is open 24 hours a day, some customers have seen some freaky things at night, including a ghost waiter who has been haunting the place for decades. No one knows who they might have been, but they must have loved their job a whole lot if they keep coming back to work after they've passed on. Or maybe they work themselves to death and can't escape the horrors of the night shift. As someone with a lot of restaurant experience, I feel bad for not only the ghostly server, but for the folks who never got their orders. Number 9, the old French opera house. Uh, before we move on to number 9, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons so that I can keep bringing you the most amazing videos. While it no longer stands today, and many bars and businesses take up the space where it once was, the witch of the opera house still lurks in the area of her final resting place. Her story begins in the 1860s. Her name was Marguerite, and she made quite a splash during her debut, but not because she was a good singer, apparently she wasn't, but it was because of her beauty. After a while, people began to see through her, and they realized that beauty wasn't enough to carry a show. 
and her career dried up. Financially ruined after losing her career and husband due to a sudden accident, Marguerite decided to fall back and open a bakery. But there was a problem. She couldn't bake. So she sent for the best Parisian pastry chef that she could find, and he came to work for her. And he was pretty easy on the eyes. They fell for each other and they were happy for years. Then one day she heard that her new husband was cheating on her and had a second apartment that they used as a love nest. Enraged, she went to the apartment in the middle of the night, turned on the gas in the fireplace, and left with the gas leaking out. The chef and the mistress suffocated, and Marguerite broke into the opera house and hung herself from the chandelier in her old costume, which she'd stolen from the production. They say that you can still hear her and see her screaming for her lost love in the street where the opera house once stood. Number 8. The Old Absinthe House It was originally built in 1752, but burned down in the Great Friday Fire of 1788. When it was rebuilt, it became a place for people to meet and discuss less than savory topics, and have some absinthe, a very strong alcohol that was said to have hallucinogenic properties. While many people gathered for drinks here, there was one meeting that took place that was instrumental in American history. According to the legend, in 1815, General Andrew Jackson called for a meeting with someone you wouldn't expect, a notorious pirate by the name of Jean Lafitte. Now, why was a general meeting with a pirate? Well, he needed help with the impending battle with the British for the city, and he knew that Jean knew the city and its surrounding swamps and waters like the back of his hand. In exchange for full pardons, Jackson had Jean's army of pirates released from jail so that they could assist with the war, and they actually helped him turn the tide of what became known as the Battle for New Orleans. Lafitte can still be seen at his favorite spot in the bar on the second floor, wearing his hat and indulging himself with food and drink. Others have spotted the ghosts of Andrew Jackson, as well as Marie Laveau and Madame Lalaurie, both of whom we'll talk about in a little while. With all of these spirits around and reports of slamming doors, footsteps, and flying bottles, I'd stay away from here. In our number 7 spot, we have the Faulkner House. William Faulkner was a Nobel Prize winning author who wrote many amazing works, including The Sound and the Fury and As I Lay Dying. Faulkner moved to this house on Pirate's Alley in the 1920s, and it's actually where he wrote his first novel, A Soldier's Pay. The house was bought by a couple in 1990 and turned into a bookstore, but apparently Faulkner never left. Visitors report the smell of pipe smoke, which the author was smoking constantly, while the new owners were not, as well as books falling off the shelves, usually books written by him. I feel like buying a haunted book is just a recipe for trouble, even if it's a classic. Number 6. Le Petit Theatre Established in 1916, this theatre has been the host to many plays and performers over the years, but one has become more infamous than the rest. In 1930s, many plays were coming through, touring the South, and one of them was led by a performer called Caroline. Her last name has been lost to time. Right before a performance, she decided to go for a walk outside on the theatre's balcony and travel tragically, fell over the rail and lost her life. Now, visitors of the theatre who go stand in the spot she fell from report a sudden drop in temperature and feel a pull towards the edge. Some people also say that they've seen Caroline's reflection in the water of the theatre's fountain, still in costume, ready to go on stage. What is it with Nola and haunted theatres? <laughs> Number 5. Sultan's Palace In 1839, Jean-Baptiste Lepret purchased a lavish half-story mansion from a struggling dentist as a new home for his brother, who just so happened to be a sultan from a far off land. When the sultan arrived by ship, he brought with him a harem of wives, eunuchs, and all sorts of lavish furniture, all of which paraded through the street on their way to the house. Townspeople who lived nearby heard all night parties and the smell of smoke emanating from within the palace, and were put off that they were never invited. But one day, a man was walking by and he saw something shocking, blood dripping down the front steps and forming a pool in the street. The man fled to a police station to tell them about what he'd found, and when the police arrived, they saw quite a grisly scene. Bodies were lying all over the floor, some with missing limbs, some cut open and broken as though some sort of beast had torn them apart. But the most disturbing find was in the courtyard, where through the wet soil, a hand was reaching up but not moving, as if whoever belonged to it was asking for help after being buried alive. When they dug him up, they recognized him as the Sultan himself. The case was never solved, but it was believed to be the brother's doing that caused the horrors, as his body was never found, and he had the most to gain from the Sultan's death. Number 4. Pharmacy Museum Now, I know a pharmacy museum doesn't sound that exciting, but stay with me here. In 1823, Louis de Philo, the nation's first licensed pharmacist, opened a pharmacy where the museum 
museum now stands, and ran it successfully for years. But in 1855, he sold it to Dr. Joseph Dupa, who lived there until he died of syphilis in 1867. But it seems that he got what he deserved. Dr. Dupa allegedly was performing shocking experiments on pregnant slaves, as well as other horrible things like poisoning with what he told people was medicine. It is said that his spirit is doomed to haunt the museum where some of the remnants of his grotesque experiments still remain, and visitors have reported seeing him in a brown suit, throwing books, and even pushing people to the ground. He seems like a vengeful spirit, so stay away from here. Number 3. Marie Laveau's House Marie Laveau is perhaps one of the most well-known and allegedly most powerful voodoo practitioners of all time. Born in 1794, she was the student and successor of Dr. John, a voodoo priest who was supposedly an African prince from Senegal. She would often conduct business in Congo Square, earning the favor of slaves by giving them charms, cures, and even spells in return for information on their masters. She used this information when the masters requested her services to impress them in a simpler way before showing her true power and conducting rituals. The house where she lived was also said to be a meeting place for people where they performed chants and rituals late into the night. The house was torn down in 1903, but a new structure, which is now a vacation rental, was built on the same foundations, and some say that that's how her spirit still remains in the house. One couple recounted the story of their stay, where late one night they heard chanting and drumming. They checked outside, but there was no one there. When they realized the sounds were coming from the empty living room, they decided to not sleep there that night. Good call. When they returned the next morning, there was a single pristine feather lying in the middle of the living room, but all of the doors and the windows were locked tight. They checked out immediately and never returned, because to a voodoo practitioner, a feather is good luck, but to an unsuspecting person, it is an omen of death or a hex having been placed upon you. So stay away from here if you don't wish to be cursed. Number two, St. Louis Cemetery number one. Established in 1789, this cemetery is New Orleans' oldest extant gravesite and is also considered one of the most haunted cemeteries in the US. With over 700 tombs and over 100 thousand dead buried here, it makes sense that there would be some spirits that hung around. While most ghosts are said to haunt the places that they died, and not their graves, something about this place draws them in. And there are some very famous ones who reside here. Allegedly, our good friend Marie Laveau is seen here more often than anywhere else, though some claim that she still lives after creating an immortality potion, and she comes here, where her tomb also resides, to communicate with the dead, only to be mistaken for a spirit. It's said that if you place three X's on her tomb, your wish will be granted, and if it is, you must return and place a gift, or you will face the consequences. Some people report falling ill here, sudden bruises or cuts appearing, and hearing voices. Other spirits of the cemetery include that of a sailor, whose family tomb was sold out from under him while on the high seas, and he's looking for somewhere to rest his soul. And finally, we reach number one, the house of Madame Delphine Lalaurie. Delphine was a wealthy woman of high stature, who married into even more riches and a grand house. She was also played by Kathy Bates in season 3 of American Horror Story. Her and her husband were often heard screaming and arguing all the way from the street, and he eventually left her, after finding out some of her dark secrets. Lanerie was a monstrous woman who performed terrible experiments on slaves that worked in her house, and her world came crashing down when a fire started in her home. When men arrived to put the fire out, they found many horrors in the attic. They found seven slaves who were suspended by the neck and stretched and bent into horrible positions which they were bound into. Some had pieces of skin flayed off or missing limbs, and one woman had apparently had her bones broken such that she could be fit into a box. Delphine fled the city that night and never returned, but it's said that the ghosts of those who were mutilated there haunt the house looking for their revenge. A man who lived there in the 1900s heard the voices telling him to do horrible things, and eventually he took his own life, proving that the spirits want no one to enter the house where such atrocities happened. Starting off our list in our number Number 10 spot we have Gangkar Puensum. This mountain has a long history of disputes on where exactly it is located, but for today's video, we'll call it on the border of Bhutan and China, which I believe is what has been settled on by researchers. This mountain is the largest mountain that has been unclimbed by humans and stands at a height of 7,570 meters or 24,836 feet. Studies and measurements of this mountain started almost 100 years ago in 1922, but it wasn't until much more recently that we began 
began to acquire actually accurate details about it. The name of the mountain means White Peak of the Three Spiritual Brothers, which becomes an important part of why this mountain remains unclimbed. In 1983, the mountain became open for mountaineering, but between 1985 and 1986, there were four separate expeditions that tried to summit it and failed. Because of what we spoke about before and how there were disputes on the location and inaccurate information, the first group who tried to summit it couldn't even find the mountain at all. In 1994, the climbing of mountains in Bhutan higher than 6,000 meters became prohibited due to spiritual beliefs, and in 2003, mountaineering became prohibited entirely. This is why the mountain remains unsummited, and while I'm sure it would be an amazing expedition for climbers, I think the idea of it remaining untouched is actually quite nice. And who knows? knows what is going on up there in terms of ecology due to it being left alone. In our number 9 spot today we have the Star Mountains. This massive mountain range is located in Papua New Guinea and although we of course know about it, much of the area remains completely untouched by humans. This area is thought to be one of the wettest places on the earth as it sees more than 10,000 millimeters of rain every year. At that point you wonder why they're still measuring in millimeters, but hey. I'm not a weatherman. Due to the rain and just how torrential the downpour is, there isn't a spot in the entire range that can house a weather station. There was an attempt made to explore the range in 1959 by a man named Jan Sneep who wanted to try and map out the area, and it was slightly successful, but not without struggle. During the expedition they had two helicopters, but due to the altitudes one of them ended up crashing and they were forced to rely on their own manpower from then on. While this of course would suggest that humans have of course at some point visited the mountain range as I previously mentioned, there are most definitely areas that remain unvisited by humans and it's probably for the best if we leave it that way. In our number 8 spot today we have the Namib Desert. This desert stretches more than 1,200 miles and is located along the Atlantic coasts of Angola, Namibia, and South Africa. This desert is recognized as one of the driest places in the entire world, so exactly the opposite of the Star Mountains we just discussed. Compared to that 10,000 millimeters of rain from before, this desert is said to only receive 2 millimeters of water per year, which seems like a much more reasonable time to measure in millimeters. It also means that there's certainly not a lot of living species species in this area, but anything that does live in this desert needs to be able to survive on the smallest amount of water possible, so humans definitely aren't top of the list for that. Not only is this thought to be one of the oldest deserts in the world, but it is also thought to be the home to more endemic species than any other desert in the world. This means species that are found in that specific region and nowhere else on earth. There are less barren and dry areas of the desert that are currently inhabited by smaller settlements and some indigenous groups, but most of the area is totally unlivable. In our number 7 spot today we have the center of the earth. This should be one that's fairly straightforward, but if you're sitting there wondering why we've never been to the core of the earth, I'm here to let you know. Basically it's way too hot. But let's break it down even further than that. Basically, if you were trying to dig a hole to the core of the earth, you'd start with the crust of the earth, which is the thinnest of the three main layers, but humans haven't even gone through this entire layer yet, even in the deepest holes on earth. Around 4,000 meters down you'll pass the deepest mine on earth, but that mine uses ice to keep its workers cool since it's about 60 degrees celsius down there. At 12,260 meters you'll get to the point of the deepest hole on earth, the Kola super deep borehole, and you'll be sitting in 180 degrees celsius but it won't be until you get to 40,000 meters that you'll get into the second main layer. The second layer is called the mantle and is responsible for 84% of the planet's volume. Here you'll be sitting at 1000 degrees celsius, which is about the temperature it feels on a human day in Toronto, and you'll be drilling through rock. Just to cut to the chase a little bit because we could sit here all day talking about the things you'll encounter on the journey such as diamonds, by 3 million meters down you'll reach the third layer which is the outer core. This will see temperatures that are similar to the surface of the sun. By 5 million meters you'll reach the core and if you can just dig another million and a half meters at 6.4 million you'll reach the center of the core of the earth. There'd be no gravity here and you'd need a super heat and super pressure proof submarine that can cut through some of the hardest materials and moves like a rocket in space in order to take on this journey. So once that's invented, we'll get right on that trip. In our number 6 spot today we have the Saka Republic. Russia is the largest country in the world but there's an area in it which is the 8th largest territory in the world 
and it remains mostly untouched by humans. This area is so large it's only slightly smaller than India. The majority of this territory is above the Arctic Circle, making it basically like a desert except the freezing cold kind. There is so little of a population in this area that if all the residents were spread out, there would be more than a square mile in between each resident, but here's the thing. You can't really live in most of this region. I mean, you can, but not without extreme difficulty. The ground is covered by permafrost, which of course has a huge impact on the ecology of the region. There is a mountain range that is located within this region, and that range is known as the coldest area in the northern hemisphere, so that says a lot. Because of the extreme weather, much of this region has gone unexplored and untouched by man, and I honestly can completely understand why. In our number 5 spot today, we have Mariana Trench. About 71% of the earth is covered in water, and yet the oceans are the places we know the least about, which is kind of terrifying. Mariana Trench is located in the western part of the Pacific Ocean, just east of the Philippines, and is the deepest part of our planet's oceans. The trench is in the shape of a crescent, and is about 2,550 kilometers long and 69 kilometers wide. Its exact depth is unknown, but what we do know is that if we took Mount Everest and put it in the trench, its summit would still be underwater by more than 2 kilometers, so it's safe to say it's pretty deep. The pressure that deep in the ocean is far too great for humans to withstand, the temperature is just above freezing, and it is incredibly dark down there, which makes it a perfect recipe of a place that we should stay the heck away from. There has been a very small number of divers who explored what is called the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest known spot of the trench, but of course not without super heavy duty equipment, and no one has been able to stay there for an extended amount of time. So of course, like I just mentioned, there have been some people who have head down to some deep, dark parts of the trench, but most of it remains a mystery to all of us, and that includes what exactly lives down there. In our number 4 spot today, we have the Kamchatka Peninsula. Russia has made it on this list again, but this one is the exact opposite of the last one we talked about. From a frozen desert, we are now talking about a volcano belt. This belt contains 160 different volcanoes, 29 of which are still active today. One active volcano is enough for me to stay away from, so 29 certainly sounds like a place everyone should stay away from. There have been a few people who have studied the region over the years, but certainly not many. Other than the high amounts of volcanic activity, which of course are an extreme danger to anyone even close to the area, because of thousands upon thousands of years of forming volcanic rock, the area only gets more difficult to explore as time goes on. On. This is what has led to this area being one of the least explored places we have on our beautiful earth. But seriously, looking at pictures of how stunning this place looks makes me want to ignore everything I just said and travel there to see it in real life with my very own eyes. In our number 3 spot today we have Greenland. Ok, bear with me on this one because you're probably sitting there thinking I'm crazy for putting Greenland on this list, but I promise I'm not. Well I think I'm not, and I'll let you be the judge. Of course I know Greenland is an inhabited country, and although Vikings landed there all the way back in 1000 CE, there are so many parts of the farthest northern regions that we simply just don't know much about. Like even as recently as 1999, there were only 6 newly discovered untouched islands just off the coast, and there is so much of the inland part of the country that remains uninhabited. Greenland is the largest island on earth at an amazing 8 million square miles, but 80% of that that is covered in ice, which makes it extremely difficult to traverse. Like in some parts, the ice is as thick as 3,200 meters, and it's been that way for about 400,000 to 800,000 years. There is a super low population on Greenland, considering the harsh conditions just don't really make it a super ideal place to live travel, or explore. In our number 2 spot today we have Valle do Javari. This place is part of the Amazon rainforest in Brazil, and is fully one of the most unexplored places in the entire world. Not only is it the home to some extremely deadly creatures, it also sees extremely heavy rainfall which causes heavy flooding and extreme currents in the river, which make it not only uninhabitable, but also difficult and dangerous to explore. Despite what I just mentioned however, it is believed that one of our world's uncontacted tribes actually lives here. These people are able to live in this area and thrive without almost all of the things we use in our daily lives, and they remain uncontacted for a few reasons, but the main one being because we don't want to spread our diseases to them, which would likely wipe out their entire population, because that would be horrible and 
absolutely devastating, which we all know about very well. Because of this tribe of people and us not wanting to ruin their home, they're actually federally protected and so is their land. There have been instances of no contact laws being broken by people like drug traffickers, but the government continues to protect these people and the land and it will remain unexplored except by those who live there. It would be amazing to hear their stories, but I'm glad that we are doing what we can to protect them because if they want to contact us, they know where we are. In our number one spot today, we have the Singhi National Park. The Singhi National Park is located on the western edge of Madagascar, but today I want to talk about the two large geographical features in the park, which are Big Singhi and Little Singhi. Singhi can be translated into English as roughly where one cannot walk barefoot, and when you see it, you'll realize this name makes a lot of sense. These rock formations are plateaus that have had deep ruts cut into them by groundwater, which has left them totally unable to be walked on or through. This whole area is incredibly fascinating and is the home to many endemic species because of its unusual geomorphology. Many of these species are found only within extremely small areas within the Singhis because the summit, slope, and base of one limestone needle will all form completely different ecosystems, which is absolutely unbelievable. The Singhis are a perfect example of what happens when humans leave a place alone and let nature and the earth just exist. It would be an amazing place to go and explore, but because of the nature of the limestone, needles we just can't and that truly is probably for the best. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot we have Tsingy National Park. Tsingy National Park is located on the western edge of Madagascar but today I want to talk about the two large geographical features in the park which are Big Tsingy and Little Tsingy. Tsingy can be translated into English as roughly where one cannot walk barefoot and when you see this place you'll realize this name makes a lot of sense. These rock formations are plateaus that have had deep ruts cut in to them by groundwater, which has left them totally unable to be walked on or through. This whole area is incredibly fascinating and is the home to many endemic species because of its unusual geomorphology. Some of these species are found only within extremely small areas within the Tsingis because the summit, slope, and base of one limestone needle will all form entirely different ecosystems, which is truly just unbelievable. The Tsingis are a perfect example of what happens when humans just leave a place alone and let nature and the earth just exist. It would be an amazing place to go and explore, but because of the nature of the limestone needles, we just can't. And that truly is probably for the best. In our number nine spot today, we have Lake Vostok. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video. It really helps us out and I appreciate it. Many of us have heard of Atlantis, but have you heard of Lake Vostok? Okay, there's probably no underwater city, so maybe that was an exaggeration, but it's still really cool. This lake is located in Antarctica, and it is so huge, it's one of the largest lakes in the entire world. The lake not only has a large surface area, but it's also really deep, which only adds to the volume of the lake. So here's the thing about it though, it is covered by ice, and not just any ice, but by the East Antarctic Ice Sheet, which is just the largest ice sheet in the world. This subglacial lake has ice so thick that we don't know a lot about what lies beneath it, and the ice has been there for millions of years. When the first samples of the actual lake water were taken, it did become very apparent that there may be many species in the lake that we know absolutely nothing about. This is like the most lakey lake out there, and it could be hiding who knows how many secrets. In our number eight spot today, we have the Star Mountains of Papua New Guinea. This massive mountain range is located in Papua New Guinea, and although we of course know about it, much of the area remains completely untouched by humans. This area is thought to be one of the wettest places on the earth as it sees more than 10,000 millimeters of rain every year. At that point, you wonder why they're still measuring in millimeters, but hey, I'm not a weatherman. Due to the rain and just how torrential the downpour is, there isn't a spot in the entire entire range that can house a weather station. There was an attempt made to explore the range in 1959 by a man named Jan Sneep who wanted to try and map out the area and it was slightly successful but not without struggle. During the expedition they had two helicopters but due to the altitudes one of them ended up crashing and they were forced to rely on their own manpower from then on. While this of course would suggest that humans have at some point visited the mountain range, as I previously mentioned, there are most definitely areas that remain unvisited by humans and it's probably for the best if we just 
leave it that way. In our number 7 spot today we have Death Road. North Youngest Road has the nickname Death Road and honestly when you just look at it you can totally understand why. This 69 kilometer road is full of hairpin turns and of course it's on the side of a mountain. Not to mention the fog, landslides and the waterfalls. It was so dangerous that until 1994 there were at least 300 drivers a year who were getting killed on this road. This road connects the Amazon rainforest to the capital city so it was happening often that salespeople would cram into trucks or buses filled with their woods and crops in order to try and sell them. The issue however was that the sharp turns were not wide enough for these larger vehicles which would of course lead to them falling off the edge of the cliff, which was always fatal. There have certainly been steps taken to make the road slightly more safe for tourists, but it still remains one of the most dangerous places in the world. It is such a shame though because it looks absolutely beautiful. In our number 6 spot today we have the Saka Republic. Russia is the largest country in the world, but there is an area in it called the Saka Republic which is the 8th largest territory in the world and it remains mostly untouched by humans. Like this area is so large it's only slightly smaller than India. The majority of this territory is above the Arctic Circle making it basically like a desert except for exactly the opposite. It's the freezing cold kind. There is so little of a population in this area that if all the residents were spread out there would be more than a square mile in between each person. But here's the thing, you can't really live in most of this region. I mean. You can, but not without extreme difficulty. The ground is covered by permafrost which of course has a huge impact on the ecology of the region. The Verkhoyansk range is located within this region and that range is known as the coldest area in the northern hemisphere. Because of the extreme weather much of the region has gone unexplored and untouched by man. And honestly I can completely understand why. Would you want to go there? In our number 5 spot today we have the Siwa Oasis. Siwa is an urban oasis between the Katara depression and the Great Sand Sea in the western desert. This oasis is one of Egypt's most isolated settlements but it is the home to around 33,000 people. The residents have developed a unique and isolated desert culture and language called Siwi but they are also fluent in the Egyptian dialect of Arabic. The oasis isn't necessarily a a super popular tourist destination as the closest city is Cairo and the oasis is around a 5 hour bus ride away and is of course in the middle of the desert but those who do take the trip certainly aren't disappointed. If visiting you can enjoy some locally grown dates and olives which I can only imagine are incredible. You can swim in Cleopatra's bath which is a mineral spring and you can even stay at the desert eco lodge which is built from mud and salt. Tourism is actually a vital source of income for the oasis so visitors are welcomed. Because of how isolated Siwa is, the culture and the traditions of the people who live here really have been preserved which would make it such an interesting and wonderful place to visit. If I ever get the incredible opportunity of going to Egypt, I think Siwa would be on the top of my list for places to visit. In our number 4 spot today we have Itor Kotimi. This town is located in one of the most remote areas of Greenland and actually requires a helicopter ride from the nearest airport in order to actually get to the town. Its modern discovery came quite recently actually in 1925 by a Danish polar explorer and around 80 Inuit settlers and it is about as far as you can get from any other inhabited area in Greenland. Despite this recent settling based on ruins and other archaeological remains it became clear that this area was once inhabited sometime in our history by Inuit populations of the past. There's around 450 residents now and the town is known for its wildlife that includes polar bears, musk oxen and seals. This place can be a popular tourist destination because of the stunning northern lights as well as all of the other natural wonders. Cruise ships also love to stop here but that can be a little tricky considering 9 months out of the year sea ice will block any ship from docking. In our number 3 spot today we have Cape Melville. Cape Melville is located in Australia and it is the home to one of the lost worlds here on earth. It truly wasn't discovered until recently and that is due to the surrounding wall of granite boulders that are hundreds of feet tall. 
but inside this stone wall is an amazing, mysterious, and uncharted rainforest, which is just the coolest thing. Because of the more recent discovery and the lack of exploration, this area has been preserved in its natural state, which is something that's not easily found on our super populated planet. This place is only accessible by helicopter and has only seen one major scientific exploration, but on this one adventure, at least three new species were found. I'm sure there will be further research of the area to learn about all of the endemic species that live here and to study how they evolved to fit in this interesting ecosystem. The earth really is just so cool. In our number two spot today, we have the San Dung Cave. This cave is located in Vietnam and it is the largest cave in the world. The name means the River Mountain Cave and it was created somewhere between two to five million years ago from river water eroding away the limestone. In some areas of the cave, the ceiling collapsed, which has created these like insanely cool skylights. These areas have allowed many plants and trees to grow and it has definitely increased the vegetation in a cave. The cave is around nine kilometers long and it is the home to the tallest known stalagmites in the world with these mineral deposits getting up to around 70 meters tall. There was a plan to install a cable car through the cave to create a tourist attraction, but thankfully those plans were canceled due to the potential harm that it would cause the environment, which I personally think most of us can agree was for the best. In our number one spot today, we have Mount Bosavi. This mountain is located in the Southern Highlands province of Papua New Guinea, but it is actually the collapsed cone of an extinct volcano. I didn't know that volcanoes could be extinct. This volcano actually collapsed to create a crater that is around four kilometers wide and one kilometer deep. There isn't a ton that is known about this area, but in 2009, an international team of scientists went down there on an expedition that was entirely filmed by the BBC Natural History Unit. It is believed that this crater was created around 200,000 years ago, and during the crew's time researching the area, there were 40 new species that were uncovered as the crater has its very own fascinating, isolated ecosystem. Who knows what more may be down there just waiting for us to uncover. Mm -hmm. 